Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, been able to present uh, together with so many architects, uh, planners, urban designers, and the notable professors here. It's really the, uh, my honor and my privilege to be here today. So um, my topic uh, is the middle ground between the Boda arts and the modernism. Given the time I have today, there's maybe not enough for me to explain why I do this research and why I think this is important. But basically, it's about um, how uh, urban design was formulated uh, as a field of study and how uh, Berkeley and Harvard and their people serve as one of many good ways in analyzing its opportunities and risk. Urban design has long been an interesting domain, but it is clear if we trace back to the time when architects moved their uh, vision at a larger ur an urban scale. The Science Force meeting, the Functional City in 1933, published the Essence Charter, which became the handbook of a wilder modern movement. The idea of total design involved through different discourses and approaches at Harvard and Berkeley, respectively. Undoubtedly, GSD made the first watermark by Urban Design Conference led by Joseph Louis Sears in the 50s, as we can see here. However, pioneering groundwork before that deserves its own right regarding the emergence of such a new discipline. So we will be starting from Harvard. Transforming a bizarre art school into a modern one, what a group is embodied GSD in a single outlook. However, any study of how GSD became a leading urban design school requires, um, in my opinion, a far richer and a more complex reinvestigation than Gurupis and his Bauhaus legacy would simply suggest. Because it was actually Joseph Hannard who established Graduate School of Design, we call GSD today, combining architecture, landscape, and planning in 1936 before the arrival of Gurupis. And uh, he oversaw the curriculum and staffing until 1953, which was after Gurupis' departure. Hanna was trained as a Boza Arts architect throughout his study at Harvard, Michigan, and Columbia. So the turning point for him to be modern would probably be his close uh, collaboration with the German planner Werner Hickmann in the United States, during which Hickmann completed a book in 1922, as you can see here with the landscape architect, uh, The American Venturers, an architecture handbook of civic art. So the impact stemmed from the Civic Beauty, City Beautiful movement tremendously impressed on Hanat that, as I quote here, the fundamental unit of design in architecture is not a separate buildings, but a city as a whole. So this is not just a simply a vision shift, as I mentioned in the very beginning, but also an ideological uh, transformation from formalistic utopianism to civic liberalism for an educator. So we're going to talk about a little more about Hanat. More than a decade before Homer Perkins founded civic design uh, program at the University of Pennsylvania, Hannah had been teaching what he called history of civic design at GSD since 1942, which he included not only architecture, but painting, sculpture, literature, social customs, and the politics from ancient time to the present. Shortly after the Second World War, Hannah liberated a GSD preliminary course he called Planning One, in which beginning students from all three departments gather together to take on the real issues um, regarding the complexity of our building environments. On the other hand, uh, Water Group has joined GSD in 1937 and the chair of the architecture department actually based on Hannah's own nomination. And it was not until he transplanted another preliminary course called Basic Design ready from the Bauhaus in Germany and the conflict took place between himself and Hanard. Because Hanard stood first, strongly against the basic design at which Gorpitz only taught his students regarding the issues of economic flexibility, uh, utility, and building technologies. For example, as you can see on the picture above here, like the prefabrication um, technology, this is actually a model made by IMP when he was doing a housing studio with Gorpitz at a GSD. Conversely, Hanard, would alternatively promote what we may call livability essentials, such as the shops, markets, windows, lights, even murmur of crowds, uh, as expressed by the image below here, which is made by one of uh, Hannah's students for his journal article called The Art of Housing. So definitely both of these images are generated by 1943. So you can definitely see different kinds of approach um, taking place at Harvard in the same school. 
Unfortunately, Hannah's time consuming approach was uh, marginal, but uh, Gorpitz's basic thing that was so popular even beyond Harvard, and Berkeley was not an exception. We are going to talk about it. Just, uh, John Howard established the first architecture department in the West Coast, which was a Parisian school in the very beginning due to his formal training at the MIT and later at the French Royal Academy. The Beaux Arts actually worked quite well before. Uh, actually worked uh, quite well until Howard's student, Warren Perry, became the dean of the school during the unrest the inter and the post-war period. To be frank, Perry's position by then was really tough because most American schools by then were actually relied mostly on the Beaux Arts system. However, when it comes to the end of the war, while um, slum cleanliness and the housing shortage caused a lot of social problems, it was classless about how they fulfilled the expectation of Berkeley students for them to re-articulate re their in-school training and their future practice, rather than the hierarchical bazaar. Even before the arrival of William Wooster, architecture students at Berkeley had made summer visits to some Bauhaus influence programs. For example, uh, in Chicago particularly, like they went to the Miss Van der Rohe's IIT and a school of design, uh, and report their experience in, uh, as we can see here in this uh, small, shortly lived, uh, not that professional looking uh, journal, not journal, uh, just a pu publication, founded in 1937 that kept campus while students at Berkeley aware of modernist developments. Of course, Berkeley is not just uh, another Harvard. In spite of its counterpart of a course disciplinary College of Environmental Design, what we call CED today, founded by a Bay Area architect, William Wooster, in the 50s. More than a decade later, compared with the case at Harvard, even so, what was crucial for Wooster to do, to do so might have things to do with his previous experience at MIT in the 40s, during which he helped city planning division to become a, a real a full department like architecture and group them together as a school of architecture and planning, what we call SA plus P today at MIT. And then at least, during his uh, day of working in Cambridge, he had a considerable face-to-face -face contact with not only Gorpitz, but also Hunnett. Although we can see a photo here is uh, Wooster with uh, Gorpitz, but actually Wooster is much more like um, Hunnett because he created introductory close classes um, concerned with urban design in style of the Hunnett's civic design. More importantly, entering the 50s of massive urban renewal, Wooster hired not only architects like himself, but also historians, um, sociologists, and psychologists to teach his studio together. So all of these courses during that period of time, um, I just to name a few here, were collectively called Area E later on, related to social and cultural factors in architecture and in urbanism. Distinguishing Berkeley environmentalist from Harvard modernist were led by more social engineers rather than the social scientists like the author of these two books I show here. So um, it was the struggle between the Euro European traditions and the American modernism that brought these important figures together in the development of urban design. Most particularly at Harvard and Berkeley, we behold a new profession to be materialized, um, formalized, and institutionalized uh, in academia. Here we can see a very famous group photo taken uh, in 1958 at a conference of urban design criticism organized by the Rockefeller Foundation that also uh, support financially the two books I show on last page to publish. So the image of the city from Kevin Lynch and the death and life of great American cities from Jane Jacobus. However, the point I want to make here is all of these would be great uh, urban designers, they are walking into deep state of honored. Because when they criticize what modernists had done, Hannah challenged what they were about to do like 20 years earlier. In so arguing, Hannah's co contribution has been uh, underscored not only by CD environmentalists, including Worcester, uh, William Wooster, but also by worldwide postmodern educators and practitioners throughout the scope we call urban design today. Taken together, urban design's Jesus face characteristic has appeared. On the one hand, urban design is in the academy is a retreat from the Bauhaus and a, and a modernist hegemony. 
On the other hand, it is a rejection of Bozar's ivory tower. In that sense, urban design becomes a kind of compromise between these ideological and the formal factions at the GSD as well as um, CED. Um, given my presentation uh, is in the sub theme we call today uh, the Reframing Design Agency, before ending up my presentation, I would like to briefly provide my uh, personal view regarding, uh, based on a symposium, uh, contemporary urban design education took place at AA in London uh, one month ago. So as you can clearly see by the color grouping here, AA and the ballet, they are much more, their, G, their urban design program are much more GSD oriented because they both included a high proportion of time devoted to studio works. And accordingly, a design portfolio is a key assessment for the degree, while as a written thesis becomes super, subsidiary. Um, also, they gave their uh, urban design program some fancy title. As you can see, projective cities, or at the ballet they call B-Pro, means ballet perspective. So all of these future MD objectives also require students to be able to, uh, to do some high-tech operating skills, which also consume lots of time during the course. But there are many for just the representation of their design works, but uh, rarely for uh, what we mentioned in these two days uh, regarding like the communication or the exchange of ideas or opinions during the, among the community members, which will be maybe better. Um, on the other hand, Cambridge and, uh, and LOSC shows us uh, uh, another aspect of concern in their urban design program. In addition to the high standard of academic writing, um, for example, at LOSC, after one year of study, you need to publish something really formally by the university uh, based on your, what is it called, thesis studio. And both of them collectively provide us much more CED sense because the students there must also spend lots of time doing their independent uh, field works in person. Take Cambridge, for example, during your two year of study there, um, after first two quarters, you stay in residence, and later on you have to move elsewhere, either in the UK or overseas, to do what they call placement learning, which may take months this long. And you have to work with an NGO or in practice. Um, however, by the end, I would like to highlight the Pro Urban Design Program at LLC further, because uh, most of their, uh, I mean, their master and the doctorate program are both administrated by the Department of Sociology. So they are admitted not only students with the professional background we may call, um, as most of design schools do today, including GSD and CED. But they also welcome those students from other professions like business or finance or humanities who are there never been able to train, train to be an architect or a planner. So, uh, in order to end my presentation today, I would like to end it by um, a question, uh, a critical question asked uh, uh, in the 21st century today. Because during my presentation, we have actually go, uh, gone through pretty back in, much in, back in time. So, um, Professor of Urban Design at Newcastle University, uh, Ali Medinakwad ever asked us the problem like this. Is urban design contributing towards environmental care or is it more in allegiance with economic and political agendas? Now, an urban design program located within a world leading social science uh, institution like LOSC made more or less response to it. To conclude, urban design is not just another minor field of architecture or planning, plus, it fills the gaps between all of these traditional uh, design disciplines. So as the diagram I show here, it's not only like an a intersection, as you can see on the left, can, uh, it, by which the urban design like a field can only be addressed by formally trained architects or planners. But urban design should be something also like the, the diagram you can see on your right. It serves as a much more like a connection, a bridge like connection between uh, traditional design disciplines, by which the likelihood of satisfying multiple interests and points of view can be increased. In other words, we probably need both of them in teaching, learning, and engaging more progressive urban design in our time. 
Last but not least, I appreciate your patience, time, and listening. Thank you very much.